The UK prison system is being brought to its knees. Violence and hostility is at an all-time high. Due to one contributing factor, new psychoactive substances. We have been given unprecedented access to HMP Goyth to hear first-hand accounts of just how the prison system has been affected. One of the reasons MPS emerged is um, the purity and availability of what we might think of as traditional drugs. So we're kind of in a world now where uh, before about 2007, 2008, you know, we, we as drug researchers, um, uh, people in services, you know, people working with alcohol drug users, we kind of knew where we stood. Okay, though, so for example, heroin, heroin use, uh, we know that that causes uh, people problems, but we also know how to deal with overdoses. We even know how to possibly prevent an overdose. Uh, and we know, for example, what kind of clinical support somebody might need in terms of treatment. The young person, I was in two rooms called Spice. Uh, so I was just there, uh, legalised cannabis. That's what I needed to be. They're not a nice thing to have. In fact, I think they're evil, to be honest with you. I think it's a horrible stuff to get involved with. When I first got introduced to it in 2011 in Weimar, it was uh, the lads come in and said, this is a legal high for cannabis. It, it, it mimics cannabis, basically. So straight away, I wasn't that interested because I thought, you know, even with cannabis, I'm a habitual smoker with the weed. So what's this legal high going to do? Well, I took it anyway. Left did the deal with him, left him, he's left me. And I've made what I'd usually make out there, but just a one paper and loaded it up, not really, not knowing nothing about it, you know. And I started smoking, I got halfway down this road, looked like, and I had to get up and shut the door. Over 40% of deaths attributed to MPS are first time users. I've ended up in hospital on two occasions. One, I had, what was it, three minor heart attacks, 13 seizures, and now I've had to go for EED tests on me, I don't know, but now I've got me on all anxiety, antidepressant, and that medication now. And this is all because of the use of MPS? MPS, yeah. And a young man was on the floor, and he was foaming, he was barking and screaming, yeah. There was officers, the, because of his strength, they were lying on him, they, they were covered in sick. Yeah. And the, the healthcare staff were frantically trying to get him back. Terrifying. Yeah. And then he went out, and the next day, he Bye. came back, he did it again. Cannabinoids are actually quite uh, recognisable in one sense. Uh, they act on a particular receptor of the body. But actually they're very different in another sense to what we think of as cannabis and even skunk. The dangers of um, MPS is nobody really knows what the dangers are. Um, you know, you've got one batch that could be doing one effect with you, and hallucinate or make you hyperactive, make you paranoid. Um, then you could, you know, go to the same person the next day or the day after and you could have a totally different effect on you. So we're talking about unknown substances here. That's one of the issues, is that particularly for uh, drug services, be they in the community or uh, in prisons, it's very hard to help people if you don't actually know what's in the substance that they're taking. I've had several experiences. Good, good and bad at first, I did like it. But afterwards, I've been up here in hospital on two occasions. Every time I went under, like, you're not knowing nothing. Like going under? I don't remember, over, yeah. Overdose. Over, going over, yeah. yeah. So going what over. happens if you overdose? Fit, sit there like, all locked up, or start having seizures. Many a times my mates have come back to see if I'm alright and they found me on the platform fitting. You know, myself personally, um, I suffer from paranoia and a bit of, like, personality disorders and it heightens that. Um, I don't, when I was smoking it, I wasn't walking around looking at people, 
as prisoners or prison officers, I was looking at potential victims because because of the demons inside my own head, it takes me to a dark place, and they're not a sort of substance or a drug you want to smoke or take if you have any sort of mental health issues at all, especially paranoia because it just plays on. I think MPS has caused us a number of issues and, and it's taken a hold quite quickly um, in, in the prison, particularly this prison. Um, last year we had a number of incidents of MPS um, to the point where it affected everybody. So we would have a number of cold blues, we would have a number of ambulances, we would have a number of um, escorts have to go out to hospital. Um, that would affect the regime, it would affect staff getting off home, it would mean prisoners might have their gym cancelled or their library cancelled because we didn't have enough staff. And it was having a day-to-day -day effect um, on the running of our prison. That's one of the issues, is that particularly for uh, drug services, be they in the community or uh, in prisons, it's very hard to help people if you don't actually know what's in the substance that they're taking. They are uh, unknown. Um, so they are either things like failed medicines. These are the medicines that would never have got to a human clinical trial, for example. So out there on the internet, there's the chemical formulas easily available, uh, and people can uh, you know, make that make these particular substances. Um, and as I said, some of them are failed medicines. Some of them try to mimic the effects of more familiar drugs. Um, so, um, what was known as MCAT, meth, uh, caffeinone, uh, tried to mimic the effects of ecstasy, of MDMA. Um, so that's part of their supposed appeal, and part of the reason they emerged as well. We have a lot of men here that are, have been spiked, for want of a better word, or to clear debt, but it's for entertainment as well. Yeah. It is commonplace for a prisoner to spike other prisoners' cigarettes to test the strength. Some inmates spike other inmates just for entertainment purposes. If we're talking about synthetic cannabinoids, then we, we really don't know. We don't know what's, uh, what chemicals are in them. Um, and one of the things we do know is that if there is THC uh, in synthetic cannabinoids, it tends to be a, a multiple of strength where um, it, it is so strong that the, the human body just can't cope in a sense. maximum custodial sentence available in a solemn prosecution under the Psychoactive Substances Act is seven years. It was on my second occasion. Uh, what, the old clock was? Yeah, yeah. Three minor heart attacks. Yeah, yeah. So you just came off one, off one incident? Uh, off one, one batch of the uh, yeah, yeah. There were 39 deaths in custody linked to the use of MPS between 2013 and 2015. This is more than double the previous year. And we took a partnership approach to look at uh, what safe custody could do, what healthcare could do, what Discover could do, um, reducing reoffending, and we all came together and we created the MPS and Hoop strategy. And the idea behind that is to have quite a strong um, response when men are found with MPS or using MPS but also to acknowledge that there is a problem and we can't just punish people we need to give them the opportunity to address their substance misuse problems. We don't know what they're taking which makes it very very difficult from our point of view to treat people because we don't know what we're treating because when we find out what we're treating they change the ingredients, so it makes it more and more difficult. If you're found using or under the influence, you'll get 28 days immediate basic. Um, if you're found with it and we think you've been supplying it, you may go on to close visits, you may not be able to use the gym, 
Um, but in partnership with Discover, if men are, feel that they would engage in that process, then they can come off basic quicker. So we're hoping that there is an incentive to use the policy and go onto the pathway, rather than just um, be found with it and be punished and that's the end of it. Spice has taken over the drug culture in prison. It has reached epidemic levels. It's, it's turned the prison system upside down. Um, you know, a prison officer, or oh, an SO that I've known for a lot of years within this jail, um, saying like, you know, as you said, I was a dying breed. I'm an old school prison, I've been doing jail for a long, long time, and I have old moles and colds and all that. But this, this NPS now, it's just turned it upside down, no one cares. You know, they'll go and rob each other, they'll just, it's, I don't know, it's just, it's messed the jail system up, to be honest. Uh, more people getting volatile, more, more violence. Uh, the staff, they don't know how to deal with it. There's no, there's plenty of knowledge to do with, you know, to, uh, psychologically to sit in with someone and telling them what's going to be happening, what, what they could be, you know, the, the, you know, the dangers of what they're doing. But I think there needs to be doctors stepping in with some form of detoxification. You know, I don't believe that always works, but I think with the NPS and the spies, some of my problems have been an added to my life that they are going to have to work something where they can detox people. You know, through the, the anxiety is like unbelievable. It's high levels of anxiety. Yeah. Um, but until something like that happens, until they can give a medicinal side as well as the psychological, the talking to and all that, you know. Mm affects the mind quite significant and sometimes they need hospitalisation, sometimes they just go out and sometimes they come down on their own, but it's horrific. Look, well, look, the physical side of it, you're going to end up with loose bowels, uh, stomach cramps, if you've been smoking it every day, you'll, these, are, these are standard with most users. But, um, like if you suffer with any mental health problems or all like that, they're going to be triggered. proper triggered and, and more heavier. Like I've su suffered with cuts itself all my normal life, on and off little bits, yeah. And I've not done it for a long time and then I tried uh, when I was smoking these pipes, like up to five, seven pipes a day. You know, one of balls on each pipe, it's a lot of spice. I couldn't get stoned off joints no more, off the joints of spice because of what I was smoking on pipes. But I tried to go like three days with that. I got to the third day and I cut up. But I didn't just cut up once or twice, I cut up 80 to 100 times. Debts are paid back through violence, intimidation, or attacks on prison officers. Um, like my mum, she's the only person that supported me through the last nine years. We've been on this sentence um, last year and this year. She was very close to walking away from me and leaving me and she's the only family support I've got because I was phoning up and she's paying debts off. You know, it's, I was asking them for money, like me, me old fellow was sending me £50 a time in, maybe once a week, maybe once every fortnight, but um, my son, you know, I've not seen him yet, but you know, I've just taken a He's not going to see me now for, you know, for about another 10 years because of it. Do, do you know what I mean? So the implications, the implications very, are massive. Very, 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 serious, yeah. Yeah. very, very, very big, you know, you, you're sat in this, in this little bubble within this prison thinking everything's okay. But, you know, you don't know that your parents or your family or your partner are just waiting for that phone call to say that you're in hospital because you, you've done a mango attack or you've gone over or you've had an attack or whatever. So the stress is for them as well. We don't see that. Yeah. We have had some success. Um, there have been some men that have gone onto the pathway that have used the services of Discover and have addressed some of their substance misuse. That there is also some men that are adamant that they will not engage with Discover and will continue to use MPS. Um, and those are the men that cause us the most 
problems because they would use MPS every day? When I use MPS, I'm family that disgusted and that I've even ever even trusted. With the MPS, all I can say it is like crack. You know, it's not lasting long, and and the desire to use more, you just it's that's that's inevitable. You know, there's a, there's a lot of people running around dated up and they've just no way out of it, but yet they'll still go looking for a fix for that day. In terms of where we, where we are now, I guess, if we think about the present situation, we've talked about how these substances emerged. Um, I like to compare them to what might be called traditional drugs, uh, and one of the biggest differences is about what we know. So obviously we know certain things about amphetamine, we know about speed psychosis, you know, we know, uh, you know how problematic skunk can be for some people. The synthetic cannabinoids uh, seem to pose one of the biggest uh, risks and that's related to several uh, different issues. So it's related to um, the way that they're produced, it's related to the unknown strength or the variability in strength of different batches. Um, so, you know, if you buy 20 bags of cannabis, 20 bags of weed, you pretty much know what you're getting. If you spend £20 on synthetic cannabinoids, you don't necessarily know what you're getting. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest issues, particularly in relation to, first of all, harm reduction and secondly, uh, treatment. Um, it becomes very difficult uh, and I think it's interesting the way that in the UK alcohol drug services both inside and outside of prisons have sought to adapt their practices to this sort of emerging problem. For me, I'm, I'm an honest patient, but honest with my family, so I'm open. Now, after I've suffered all these heart attacks, I, I sat down with my mum and on a vision and said, listen, this is what's happening with me. Nah, well, what's your reckon I should do? What, what advice can you give me? The best advice she gave me was to get myself back on that TC and get off everything. Did you do that? Nah, yeah, I'm on that TC. I haven't touched nothing for nine, nine and a half weeks long. So we ended up with a close stomach bag because he cannot keep anything on his stomach. He's That's lost another thing. I've huge heard. amounts of weight, yeah. and everything that he eats and drinks is just running straight through. Because we don't know the, the effects yeah. on the body. Of course. I mean, it doesn't just affect your lungs and your heart and your well and your brain. Mm -hmm. It's got to affect the others. If someone came to me in a, in a moment of clarity and said that they had a problem with MPS, I wouldn't put them on the immediate 28 days basic. I would signpost them to discover the 28 days basic came about because. The regime was being stopped practically every day and everybody was being affected by it. And there was a risk that if we did nothing, somebody would die from MPS use. Touch wood, we haven't had that guard, but they have in other establishments. I didn't realise that's when they're going to tachycardia. Yeah. I mean, the pulse, your pulse rate, not basic, uh, 72, 80, something like that. I mean, it can go up to 100, 110, 120. Oof. That is a lot. And you're like looking at it and. <laughs> You're still panicking, sad whether you're in or not, because you just don't want to lose anybody. I've, last Earlier this year, I had, um, was it this year? No, just, just before Christmas, I had a, a really bad experience on one of the wings here. Um, it was a very strong batch, and I only took a couple of talks on a, on a split. And if it, was, if it wasn't for a table outside the server, I'd have hit the floor. It was just, I, I couldn't move. I had to just sit there and ride it out, and I was very, very close to going over. And I had to use the walls to get back to me. So it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a terrifying, it was terrifying. We're all human beings. We all have feelings. We're all affected, and each person will be affected by a traumatic event differently. Um, what, what I say, sign up, um, not to see people dicing with their life um, like that. Um, I signed up to hopefully help people to live more purposeful lives and I signed up to be someone that would protect the public. Um, it isn't a nice thing to see. I wish I would never have to see it again. The chances are maybe in the next few days I'll see it again. Probably in the next few hours. Maybe in the next few hours. Treatment services can kind of open up uh, to 
people that might not be used to, uh, or might not even see themselves as drug users, might think that cannabinoids, synthetic cannabinoids are safe. Uh, and so information, uh, information and treatment and, and peer support, seeing people in visible recovery, that's what's crucial. Nobody really knows what substances are contained in MPS. As mandatory lifers, if we see somebody in a cell unconscious, we cannot touch them, we can't go into that cell. Because if we're seen as the last person going in that cell and coming out and that person dies, then we're up for manslaughter. The only thing I can do is shout for an officer if they're in the cell. If they're on the landing, because there's cameras, then I might be able to help and put them in a recovery position, try and keep them still. But if they're in the cell, as you know, as much as I'd love to go in and help them, I'd have to shout for an officer. Yeah. Stronger than than what the other looks way. So at least with the other looks, do you do you what they wear, what what they were taking, what 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 side effects they had. You know, if they need the dog, they can get it. With these new MPSs, they just they don't know what's in it. They don't know what to put into the system. I, I know that some practice different strains, different compounds, and everything, different cannabinoids. But it's all about that batch. It won't, won't, won't cut off a small effect on you. And you, you go to another place and get a shot off someone else. Smoke that one and then boom, gone. See you later. So it's, pe people have got a lot of problems in jail. They come to jails that they, they can't cope with themselves. So some people tend to it to get a relief. Uh, if they're sweats, if they're heat, you know trying to apply a cold flannel or something just to cool them down. Yeah. All depends on what the effects are and, and uh, what they're going through. If, if they're screaming out because they're seeing something that's not there, then the best thing is to try and speak them down and talk to them in a nice, calm and relaxing way. Yeah. Tell them nothing's happening. Make sure no one's crowding around because that could be worse. Try and give them breathing space but also shout for officers as well. Yeah. It's escapism, isn't it? It is, it is. I, I, and I think that's basically the main reason. I, 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 can't, I can't comprehend why they would do it for any other reason. I don't know. So I don't really know where we go from here apart from talking about it, helping them, giving them a light at the end of the tunnel. He's coming to me asking for advice and that. As a, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a peer mentor for Discover as well. Um, I'd invite him in, have him chat, and I'd, I'd give him my own experience of it. And it's not worth it, it's, you know, telling me exactly where it's took me to, what I've had to sell for it, what it's left me, how I've had to fight back, you know, what it does to the family. I can only give people advice and give them my own experiences, whether or not they want to take that advice and, and that support. I can only give what I can, so whether or not they want to take it or... The PS Act makes it an offence to produce, supply or import any psychoactive substances for human consumption. And on each room there's a, there's a Discover men, Peer Mentor. Um, if someone's finding that they've got habitual habits with any substance, either with spice or any other like subby text and that, um, you know, they can go to the, the Peer Mentor and ask for advice and support from there where we can make referrals to discover or if we, we see a worker we can point it towards them or point them in the right direction whatever help they need we can offer it within our means it must be horrific for the family it's the families because their pain's gone if they don't survive but it's what's left behind that's what they should think about no, that's what uh, from, from the EED test and everything that, that I've had, he just said, if I carry on personally, I will not make it to the age of 45. And no, yeah. I'm only 26. You're 26 so years old. Go space, get off it.